to reach to the three power point power spec. What is up guys and welcome to the Beyond Zanas here on the Money Machines. In today we are playing a 1v1 one -one matchup on the legendary map Forts of Aizen in a random mirror match and we will get to play with the Gondor faction, the white three. Unfortunately, we are not on host in this game, so it's gonna be a little bit more challenging because you know when you're not on host, your micro is gonna be a little bit delete. But maybe we can make it work. So need to wall check at the beginning of the game, that's very important. And it looks like it's the evil faction. So um, I like that one. <laughs> I'm you know I'm a simple man. I I see evil faction when I play good faction and I already like it. So in order to make this a bit more entertaining, we can also make it to a guide. How to play Gondor against evil faction. So at this at this point of the game, we don't know the specific race of the opponent player, but we know it's the evil. And this tells us that we need to play aggressively. We need to try to destroy his economy as soon as we potentially can. That's our goal for the early game. And for that reason, we're gonna send those soldiers forward from the top side, which you can send from the middle too, but don't use the same pathway every single game. When you do that, you will be quite predictable, you know? Okay, so he was not able to see us, that's pretty good. And we can capture him. Oh, okay, never mind. There are Uruk, so it's a good against evil, Gondor against Isengard matchup, my favorite. I like this matchup the most. In either way, I like to play it as Isengard, but also as Gondor. And against um, Isengard, you can start with the Elven Wood. Against Mortor, you wanna wait. You don't wanna pick it, because if you use Elven Wood, he can just use his own tainted land and cover yours. Oh, look, this guy's using my strategy against me. Oh, <laughs> he's rushing the crossbowman. I like this opening actually a lot. Because you can kite, remember? Oh, it's lagging. Remember, the Isengard infantry is the, you know, fastest out of all four factions in the game, and you can this way kite. And whenever I stop chasing you, you can turn around and beat me. He needs to repair this. If he doesn't repair it, I will destroy it. We have almost the money for his stable. That's gonna be the plan. Okay, nice. So stable is up on the field, or coming up on the field. And, you know, even if you can't deal economical damage, you want to put pressure. You don't want to waste, you, you don't want to do nothing. Because if you do nothing, your opponent can just, you know, use the unit and creep. So it looks like we won't be able to deal any damage with the soldier. But it's okay because we are bringing the Hobbit Peregrine Took. And he can simply kill some workers. I mean, this guy is repairing like crazy, by the way. <laughs> I like that one, dude. Good job, man. That's what you are supposed to do. Look how many workers are creeping. They are actually repairing faster than I'm able to deal damage to the building. And this is kind of crazy, dude. I like that one. Very good job, my friend. You will be able to save it, too. I'm proud of you. I'm, I'm always happy when I get when we get more great players. And uh, Ari is actually one of those guys who is kind of improving a lot. It becomes scary, but also exciting at the same time. You know, I like to have a very tough opponent to practice with and against. And also he's participating in the upcoming World Championship, which is starting basically today in the live stream. I mean, actually tomorrow, but you will be watching this video at Friday. So for that reason, um, make sure to tune in in the live stream. You can find the link for the Twitch channel in the description down below too. Okay, in a dream world, we can also save the Hobbit. That's gonna be very important. We can cloak the Hobbit around the spot. And Isengard has to either recruit Lourdes or use the Palantir, Vision of Palantir from the spell book to reveal my Hobbit. So I wanna kill those Plebs units first with my Gondor Knights. I mean, at this point of the game, what is important for us is to fish as many power points as we potentially can. We want to reach to the three power point power spec, in which we can call on the Grey Company from the spell book which are archers, which are going to be extremely important because later on the Isengard will spam a lot of pikemen. And even though you can go for the barracks, but it will be a little bit slow. Your archers will give you the chance to be summoned offensively and then you can base rush the Isengard with your Gondor Knights and archers can take care, of the, take care of the pikemen. That's what we are aiming for in this game and hopefully we can make it work. So far we have actually one power point and a half, almost a half, almost a half power point collected, which is pretty good. And we need only one and a half power points more. Then we should be good to go. Creeping is very important, but if you are very first Gondor Knight, you want to destroy the enemy mill. That's very important too. I 
I mean, you can go for, for like three Gondor Knights like I did in this game, but you can also go for two Gondor Knights and fill up your base. I mean, they are both vi viable strategies. I personally like them. I personally like the three Gondor Knights opening um, because it gives me the chance to put pressure on him while I'm also able to creep at the same time. That's what I'm aiming for. Okay, beautiful. Look, um, we cannot fight against the pikemen, but we can, you know, obviously disengage. Like, get the money too, that's good. Very good, actually. And creep. I mean, I'm actually, I, I'm, I'm thinking that I was able to break the curse of Isengard, boys. I'm not getting Isengard anymore, that's pretty lit. I'm missing Mordor and Rohan, because I got also Gondor quite a lot. And let me know, guys, in the comment section down below, what faction you want me to play next time. I mean, it's not like I'm picking a faction. I'm just always picking random, and I let the fit decide for me, you know what I mean? Okay, we have almost the power points uh, for the great company, that's pretty good. We will have also shields plus uh, forge blades, and that's gonna be enough for the rush. rush. And interaction and multi multitasking is very important in this game. So as we gonna rush the base of our opponent, boys, we will also... It's lagging, by the way, quite a lot. We will also build the barracks... And as he has to defend and pay attention to his castle, we can use the soldiers coming from the barracks to reclaim the map control against the pikemen. Because remember, the pikes are very vulnerable against swordsmen of Gondor, even against orcs. So you want to be the one who is, you know, forcing your opponent to pay attention to multi multiple things. It's the RTS game, which is rewarding the player with more APM, so action per minute. And we can focus every single settlement while we're crushing and rushing his piece. That's going to be my plan. Hopefully, it's going to work out. I mean, the only problem is going to be this lag in which I can't really micro my Gondonites that well. That can actually cause some problems, but hopefully not. Anyways, <laughs> wish me luck. Because I'm about to rush. I'm about to go ham. We have um, almost the heal from the spellbook too. And the goal is simple. We want to go inside the beast from the opponent player with all three Gondor Knights and force him to come with the pikemen to his own location. Then we're going to summon the Grey Company. The Grey Company is going to take care of the pikemen and our Gondor Knights are going to take care of the buildings. Nice. Okay. So you want to avoid trampling the pikemen. That's very important. But it's hard because it's kind of lagging a little bit. <laughs> Look, it's so hard, dude. I'm clicking. I'm clicking. But it's fine. It's fine. Normally, when you play this matchup, Gondor play has to be on host because it's way harder to micro with the cavalry units in compared to with the pikemen. Oh my goodness. I mean, he wasn't paying attention either. If you don't switch your pikemen in the porcupine formation just in time, you don't deal that much revenge damage. So if you don't use formation and you get trampled, it won't hurt. But if you use formation and the enemy is trampling your pikemen, they will get one-shotted. It's lagging! Okay, so the goal is to bring, um, to destroy the Uruk pit, which means the opponent player will never be able to recruit pikemen anymore. I mean, again, boys, this matchup is you want to rush, 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 rush. And hopefully, I can impress you with my Gondor Knights micro. You want to, you see, with the shields, uh, knight shields, and then the heavy armor combination, you are pretty much almost immune to the towers. However, when you want to rush the base from Mordor or Isengard, you want to do that before any furnaces or slaughterhouses are hitting level 3. Because if that's going to be the case, every single building, including the sentry towers, are going to be able to deal perma DPS to your units, and you cannot stand, just like I do now, in the base for a long duration. And he was greedy. I mean, I respect the fact that he was going for the map control. He was doing a phenomenal job in terms of map control. But you can't leave your base unprotected like that. You know, but from Mystique, we will learn. He is a player who is improving quite a lot. And I'm pretty certain he will be a very worthy opponent in the near future. Oh my goodness. It's so hard <laughs> to micro. Okay, so keeping your units alive, of course, is the key to victory. Because they are very valuable, especially the highly leveled one. Ha 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 
Why am I not shutting my mouth, dude? Every single time I'm managing, I'm able to jinx myself. Every single time! The second I'm saying I need to keep my units alive, I end up losing one. I will not say that anymore, guys. I'm... I mean, for my defense, it's quite lagging. <laughs> but also, I believe my brain is lagging at the same time, you know? He crippled my lords and my Pippin. And you can you imagine, my Pippin was there from the beginning of the game. And if I would be him, I would just Palantir. It's a very valuable settlement next to your castle. You don't want to give it up like that. It's only one power point from your spellbook. It might slow you down a little bit, but it's worth it. And then you can use the Palantir to scout what your opponent is doing. Which, by the way, is increasing your reaction time. One tip I can give to you when you play with evil factions, boys, is you need to use your workers, your lumber mill workers, and send them across the map to scout and see the plan and the idea of your opponent. See the barracks when it's building up. So you know very soon he will have soldiers. And this can give you the reaction time you need to build the warp in time to counter your opponent before it gets too late. I mean, it's lagging too much, <laughs> but I'm going to rush him anyway. So we have also the Rohirrim summon. Uh, four Veolingas. So we should be in a good spot. And normally, I would like to go for Gandalf, but I'm not going to do this in this game. I want to actually go just like... I want to show you what is achievable with your Gondor Knights if you micro them well. That's the key though. I mean, you can... One mistake, one little misstep can cause you to lose all your Gondor Knights and they are so expensive. And again, you cannot replace a level 6 Gondor Knight. It's not possible. Again, don't trample. Run the opposite direction. Nice. I mean, we're also collecting so many power points because we are attacking him so frequently that it's very hard for him to actually demolish the buildings in time. Remember what I always say, when you don't demolish the building before it hits the 50% HP mark, you will end up feeding a lot of power points. And there are some certain buildings and uh, units you don't want to lose. For example, if you lose a statue to your opponent, it's so rewarding for him. He will get so many experience points and power points from it. The same goes to the well of the Gondor and Rohan faction. And also the sentry towers. The sentry towers are feeding so many power points. Don't lose him! Sorry for screaming. But, you know, it's hard to talk and play at the same time sometimes. Okay, you see what I mean? In the meantime, you are able to take all the map, you know, with the soldiers. That's what you want to do. You want to be interactive. You want to be multitasking. You want to be hitting like a truck. And that's how you should be playing this game in this matchup. Trust me on that one. <laughs> I'm planning to bring the hitting like a truck back in the business, by the way. I was not saying it, using it for a, for a couple of months now. I think you guys missed it. I mean, maybe, you know, if you guys are new to the channel, hitting like a truck was pretty much the phrase I was always using in almost every single video. But I was trying to take a break, which was kind of hard at the beginning. But now I want to bring it back, you know what I mean? It's like my trademark, boys. Hitting like a truck, trust me on that one, <laughs> is on my trademark. And you see, with the infantry cavalry combination and the snowballing effect, with the very first Gondor Knight, we were able to get a lot of power points to trample his units, his pikemen were to delete. And that's the downside of opening with a crossbow man. Because that's gonna mess up your eco a lot. And it will delay your uh, Uruk pit to hit level 2. Which means your, your pikemen are gonna be later than the enemy Gondor Knight. And that's bad, you know. You wanna have your pikemen before the first Gondor Knight is coming on the field. We have almost the eagle's pow eagle power points too. We can also go for Gandalf if you want to. But let's be honest here. We don't really need it. I'm gonna summon the Great Company one more time. And Boromir will be able to see the glory days of Gondor once again. Look, we have four Gondor Knights, we only lost a one battalion. Very unfortunate. But, you know, you can't have a perfect game every single time. And again, boys, the World Championship. We will have a, quite a lot of activity in this channel, in the second channel of mine, which is called PFME World, also on YouTube. And, of course, also on Twitch. And... Quick reminder, every sub we can get during this tournament will be used as a cash prize for the World Championship. So, if you want to support the tournament, all you gotta do is first of all watch the streams, it's for free, follow the channel, it's also for free, and GG, and uh, you know, what you can also do is you can connect, connect, <laughs> connect your 
Amazon Prime if your Twitch account, it will give you a free sub every single month. And you can, you know, choose a, choose a streamer you want to uh, support and subscribe to. Choose me, because again, you will be using this for the cash prize of the World Championship. We have 34 players in total for BFME 1, 32 players for in total for Rise of the Witch King. It's going to be a phenomenal tournament. It's going to be a lot of fun. And I really hope to see you guys around. GG well played. Gondor must prevail. Alright. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to leave a like. Subscribe for more videos like this in the future. I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep hitting like a truck. And as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys. Everybody want to know what I would do if I didn't win. I guess we'll never know.